In this video, we're going to start looking at how to calculate the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium ion and hydroxide ion in dilute solutions. And to start off with, we're going to look at what happens with water, just pure water. And we normally think of water as just a nice, stable, unchanging substance. Uh, we use it all the time uh, in both our regular lives and in chemistry lab. And we have always ignored the fact that it can ionize. It's known as the self-ionization of water. And um, we, we usually ignore it because it doesn't do it very much. In fact, I've heard the uh, comparison that if we had a swimming pool, and I thought we're talking about like a city swimming pool full of water, only about a thimble full of it will go through this ionization. And so it's not generally important for most of the time. However, it, it is important enough that when we start paying attention to what's going on in dilute solutions, uh, we've got to pay attention to the self-ionization of water. Well. So here is the equation for the self-ionization of water, and I've written it in the kind of Bronsted-Lowry model here. So remember that whenever we see the hydrogen and the hydronium ions, those are the same thing. So here it is, water reacting with water to produce the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. And as I said, it only occurs in very small amounts. In fact, research shows that the hydronium ion concentration and these little brackets here they mean the concentration of that substance in moles per liter. So we can put substances in these square brackets, or we can put numbers in the square brackets, and they, that means the concentration in moles per liter, or that, that would be molarity if it's a solution. So research shows that the actual concentration of hydronium is very small, 1 by 10 to the negative 7th molar or moles per liter. So uh, it's very tiny, uh, 1 10 billionth of a mole per liter, so not very much goes on for hydronium. Now, how about the hydroxide ion concentration? What's the hydroxide ion concentration? I'd suggest you pause here to think about that for a second and see if you can come up with a number for that. Okay, well hopefully you figured out that in this reaction it's one water, one water, one hydronium, one hydroxide, so for every one water we get one, we use one water, we get one hydronium, one hydroxide. So if this number is 1 by 10 to the negative 7th, hydroxide also has to be 1 times 10 to the negative 7th as well. All right, so we know that the hydronium ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration are the same, and they are values that are constant for water. As long as we have water, that we're going to get that 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. So we're going to develop a new number here called the ionization constant for water. It's given the symbol KW, or just K sometimes. I like to put subscripts or numbers next to it to indicate what K is for because there are a lot of K values in chemistry. And K just stands for constant here. So what we're going to do to find KW is we're going to multiply the hydronium concentration times the hydroxide concentration. Those are both 1 times 10 to the negative 7th times 1 by 10 to the negative 7th. We're just multiplying these numbers together. And KW's value is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Now I'm leaving out some details here. For example, this depends on temperature. But we're not going to worry about that too much here. So Kw is the hydronium times the hydroxide ion concentration, and its value is 1 by 10 to the negative 14. Okay, so here that is, all written out in one straight line. And this relationship, Kw, is true for any solution in which water is the solvent. So it doesn't make any difference if it's pure water anymore. This relationship that H3O times OH will be 1 times 10 to the negative 14 is true for any solution. And that's going to be a powerful thing that we can use going forward.